Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Whitfield welcoming you to our weekly broadcast. Today, we're going to be looking at Isaiah, the 53rd chapter in the 10th verse. But before we go there, I just want to thank the Lord first and foremost for an opportunity that I had this weekend to go to the Guiding Light Ministries of Wilmington, North Carolina, under the leadership of Apostle Angela Bannerman and Pastor Michael Bannerman. My hat's off to you, and I honor you both for your love and your hospitality that you have towards the people of God. I also want to mention our minister, Dion Bannerman, and his lovely wife, Sister Maya Bannerman, who head the prayer line uh, that I'm a part of on Wednesday evenings. This is a prayer line that is very powerful. They have prayer services going on on, on a conference call seven days a week. They start, I believe, at 12 midnight at 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. at 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and 9 p.m. nightly. This is going for seven days a week, and each of those nights and each of those hours, they have different speakers that are on the line, men and women of God from around the country that are astute in the Word of God and will share it and are not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ because they know that it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. I want to just thank the Lord for them and the Godding Light Church family. What a hospitable group and a loving bunch and the fact that they're just just down to earth people. They love the Lord with all their heart and under the leadership of Apostle Bannerman who is a prayer general, mighty woman of God in the spirit of the Lord and I just love them all. So thank you for the opportunity for having to come into your home and preaching the word of God to you. Now let us prepare our hearts as we are about to go into the word of the Lord for today. And Isaiah 53 and 10, it reads, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. And the first portion of the verse is where my primary focal point will be today. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. And this is influenced by a conversation that I had with Apostle Bannerman on last evening. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for the things that you're doing and the things that you have done and the things that you're looking to come out of the lives of your people. God, we just give you honor. We give you praise because without you, we recognize that we are absolutely nothing. And for everything that you have done and have allowed us to go through, Lord, we give you thanks. And we owe you a debt of gratitude for the things that you've done for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, looking at the word of the Lord, the very first portion of that particular text, it says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Amen. And even in conversation sometimes, we have to always reflect back on the things that the Lord has done and the examples that he has set before us and the things that God himself wants us to take note of and gravitate towards and even give us a better understanding of who he is and his nature. And sometimes when we read the scriptures, we think that we are exempt of certain things. And God wants us to know that any time that he is going to use us or anoint us, that we must experience some of the things in our lives that we don't want to go through. And sometimes we have absolutely 100% no choice of the things that we have to deal with. And in order to get to the point of usability, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, one must go through divers tests and trials and even sometimes those things that are extremely painful, that are hurtful, things that are hurts our hearts, that causes our hearts to bend and causes our hearts, listen, to cause our hearts to come into a place of great pain to the point 
that that pain causes us to lose focus on what our true purpose is. And oftentimes we rehearse the pain, the effects of the pain in our minds. In our minds, it becomes a war that goes on continuously. And the thing is, until we understand what the Lord is doing in our lives, that we will not have a greater level of appreciation for it. And the thing is, here in the very first verse, it says, yet it pleased the Lord. In other words, God was happy. God was overjoyed. It pleased him. It satisfied a longing that he had in his mind, in his nature, to bring about for his people. It pleased him to the point that he could set a plan in motion. A plan in motion that would cause certain causes and effects to come into our lives, to come into our lives, to bring some devastating effects and even pain and nights of sleeplessness, the nights of crying and tolling and agonizing. And sometimes we don't understand the full call course of why God had done a certain thing. And sometimes we are just like that woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. We are also like sometimes in the case our own worst enemies when it comes to the dealings of the Lord, when God is dealing on us, working in us, and we have no clue of where God is taking us to. But yet, it pleased the Father to bruise us, to crush us. And even on this past week, I talked about how God crushes the olives and crushes us to get the new oil out of us. Some of us are still functioning and existing on the old oil. But God wants to get new oil out of our spirits. Tune in bi-weekly on social media to hear the word of the Lord through Pastor Woodfield. Join us and be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you. Let's look at the word please in even a deeper depth. It means that God was pleased to bruise his people or to bruise you. Understand that when God's intent to bruise us is not to destroy us. It's only to make us better and into an image that is pleasing unto him to the point that he can see himself, and his glory in us. So when God said that it pleased him to crush his son, it pleased him to put him to an open public humiliation, open public shame. And there are times that God will allow our names and our reputations and our intentions and our motives to be dragged through the mud and although the scriptures say, does not let people talk of your good as evil, there are times that even your good is evil spoken of, even though you're living in honesty and integrity and in holiness and walking before the Lord. But yet it pleased the Lord to allow you to be put to an open shame, to allow your name to be marred, to be a, allow your reputation to have people gossip about you erroneously. And even in some cases, there are some things that they are gossiping about that is really truthful. Things that you did do or we, I have done. Things that we may have said out of our own mouths or actions that we may have taken. Things that we didn't know what we were doing in the moment. But yet they took that thing, whether good or bad or 
in between and God allowed them to take it and make something worse of what the thing really was and the negative impacts and influences that it had on the inside of our lives that brought us down to a place, to a horrible pit of despair and agony, of suffering, of shame, and even sometimes being verbally abused, rejected and neglected and lied upon and hatred being heaped upon us and the pain and the agony told in our minds and in our hearts. And in some cases, we accuse God and accuse Him falsely, not perceiving or fully understanding the hand of God that was at work in our lives not fully realizing that although he allowed us to be sold by our brethren, sold into bondage, sold into slavery, and now we're in Potiphar's house, and the Lord has begun to bless us to a certain degree, but yet we still have the animosity of the pain of being bruised in our hearts. And even in Potiphar's house, although everything that you put your hands to is blessed, there is a liar there lying in wait to cause you to fall even into a deeper state of despair and in even causing your name and reputation to even be even more a reproach to the God that you serve, and to the person that you are. And in Potiphar's house, his own wife, the thing that is closest to him, the thing that has been most intimate with him, the thing that knows all of his secrets, know all of his ways, but yet Potiphar is not fulfilling that need. So now, that lie in spirit, since it's not being satisfied and it is insatiable, it must pursue satisfaction at all costs. And unfortunately, at times, we are in the wake or in the target of that very thing that has not been satisfied and until God's bruising of you has been satisfied you cannot escape it you cannot be released from it because the pleasure of the Lord must be satisfied when God has had his fill of you going through and your spirit man has been broken and God has caused you to be wounded for his glory and after that wound has been there for a while and festered and although you may have sought him intensely for healing until he has completed his perfect work in you, the thing will not release you. And the thing is, you may be in ministry, ministry, hurting and in pain, going home at night crying, asking God, God, what is this thing that you doeth? unto me. You see how I minister to your people, but yet they're receiving healing and strength and encouragement. Then I go home in pain to a lonely room and a bed of suffering. God, don't You see it. And God.
God wants you to get to the point that you gain an appreciation for the very thing that he brought in your life that has caused you agony. When we understand that it pleased the Lord to bruise us, we begin to look at it in a completely different light. It was the Lord that sent it. The devil may have brought it, but it was the will of the Lord that we endure and that we go through it. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, that those that choose to live godly will suffer persecution for the namesake of Jesus Christ. If God has anointed you for a purpose, you are going to go through you must consider the cost of the anointing. And it is extremely costly. But when it pleases the Father, when it delights the Father to see you go through, and you gain that understanding. Let me give you some wisdom that even in the midst of the storm, you should express an attitude of gratitude, of being fortitude in God to go through the bruising process. It is an honor. To go through for the kingdom. And many of us look at it. As disgrace. Many of us look at it. In the wrong light. Let me be candid. With you. Many years ago I was wounded deeply. By a couple of people. And I have been rehearsing that. Ever since 1998, a man with an issue of blood, bleeding, even in priest messages, bleeding, thought I had thanked the Lord and was healed from it. But until you get to the reality of what God was doing, and it takes someone with wisdom and godly insight that can see into your spirit man and see into your eternal soul and extract what God was doing out of you and speak healing and give you the appropriate reaction to what transpired. And the voice of wisdom says this, tell God, thank you. Show him appreciation. Your gratitude determines your latitude and the height in which you will ascend. And the quickness in which he will completely release you to be able to get all that he has predetermined for you to walk in in the fullness of the timing of of God and in his timing 
when he releases you, you will come forth as pure gold. You will come forth with the goods. You will know God in a deeper depth, in a deeper measure. It will no longer be an elementary level, but it will be at a depth that you never experienced before. I often crave to walk in revelation knowledge of the scripture. That's been my desire for years. And to be able to meet the need of hungry people in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. No other motive, no other desire, but I had to be crushed. And many of you out there listening have intense anointings. And you're wondering why you're going through the way that you're going through. Why are you still yet broken? Is there no bomb in Gilead for the healing of God's people? The summer has passed. And my people are not healed. There is a bomb in Gilead. And he sent his word to heal all of our diseases. That's even the sickness that comes from your hurt. From the open wound that has festered and has become infected by the things that the devil wants. Now is time to have that wound exposed, drained, cleaned, packed, and healed. So that you worldwide may do the ministries that God has called you for. Understand, Hurting people with all good intentions hurt other people, not willingly. And in some instances, willingly. Let us seek the Lord for our healing together corporately. Why does some of this error exist in the body of Christ? Because we are not healed. And we're manipulating and controlling people and are seeking prestige to deal with the hurt of our pain and we are not seeking God for healing. The day has come where God will no longer allow us to stand before his people with wounds that are oozing without it being exposed and he bringing healing. When we are hurt and we wound other people, You feel empowered. That's why we can get away with some of the junk that is coming from the pulpit because we have not been healed. And in order to make us feel good, we must go on a high of power. And that high of power is hurting people 
We should see people coming to the Lord and being healed. Not leaving the house of God wounded, broken, battered, scarred. They should not leave in a worse state. They should leave better, healed, delivered, set free, motivated and encouraged to live for God with all their hearts, with all their soul, and with all of their might. If it pleased the Father to bruise us, then let's seek him for the purpose for why he bruised you, why he wounded you. No, you are not Jesus Christ, but you are his brethren. And he said the same things that he would do or experience or go through, so would we. We are not greater than our Lord or our Master or our Teacher. Our Teacher has taught us lessons to prepare us to go through by His example. Everything that He did for us was an example to prepare us for what we ultimately must deal with and go through. We're not going to bounce through this life of holiness without tasting of a cup that he tasted of. His power came through his sufferings. And the power that he extended unto the church was through his suffering. The Bible said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. We must be willing to be conformed to the image of his death in order to know the power of his resurrection and to walk in that dunamis power of his death, burial, and resurrection that he ascended on high and gave gifts unto men. He said that we might know him and the fellowship of his suffering. How many times as a Christian have you cried out, God, I want to know you. Well, you will know him until you suffer with him, until you feel his pain and his agony. Then you can identify with him. Because there will be a point of relation. The Bible goes on to say in that same chapter, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinks he has reason, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Paul goes on to say, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, a Hebrew of the Hebrew, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, 
and do count them but rubbish that I may win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death if any means I may attain, attain unto the resurrection of the dead. God wants us to experience a true resurrection in our spirit man where we have suffered and are coming into the vast knowledge of Jesus Christ and who he really is. He's not a Santa Claus. He is God. And in order to know the mind of Jesus Christ, we must suffer to get close to him, to know him in a way that we have never known him before and hear from him in such a dramatic, diverse way. Go through, saints of God, because at the opposite end of the day, there's a greater oil that is well worth it. There is victory to be had in the way that we are healed and live our lives and receive from our God. It will not be in carnality, but it will be totally in the spirituality that God has for us. Go and embrace and be grateful that you're honored by God to suffer along with his son. The children of ancient in the scripture counted all joy, listen to me, to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. They went through they did not balk when they were persecuted. They were sold a shun to fed to lions because they were looking, because their persecutors did so. But they were looking for a better resurrection. And while we're on this side of the earth, why not look for a better resurrection to be empowered by God to be able to walk in the influences of the kingdom of Jesus Christ and come out with power that you never had before. There are keys to the kingdom to be had. But you can only get these keys through suffering for the name of Jesus Christ. No, it is not pleasant. But yet, it will yield the peaceable fruits of righteousness towards God. This is Pastor Whitfield saying, I love you and God bless you. And meditate upon the word of the Lord this week. And you will receive gratitude for the things that you have suffered. Go in peace and bless the Lord. Thanking him for all that he has considered.
for our lives. God bless you. Until next week. <laughs>